Shalom Aleichem Chevra. Welcome to another edition of the Davening Experience. If you are enjoying these, please share them with others. And if you want to be able to get them as soon as they come out, please click on the subscribe button. I want to talk about moving on from Hashem's name to Hashem's name. In the Shemona Esrei, we talk about Baruch Atah Hashem, Elikeinu Velikeinu. What's the difference between saying Hashem's name Yudke Bavke and saying Hashem's name as Elokeinu? So Yudke Bavke, as we discussed a little bit, is Hashem's name of being beyond time, Hayahova Vyeya, and the way that we pronounce it has the implication of the Adon Hakol, that He's the master of everything. When we move on to Hashem's name, which is really more of a description of our relationship with Him, which is Elokeinu, so we mean that He is our Lord, He is our master. More than Yud Kevavke is a name of Hashem, although Kim means we are responding to Him, we are referring to Him in terms of the relationship that He's He's the Lord, He's our Master. Like we said in the past, sometimes a person is referred to by His name, and sometimes he's referred to by His title, by His job description, by His relationship with the person that's speaking to Him. Eitan versus Abba, Rebbe. And we also say, not only Elokeinu, but Elokeinu, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is also the Lord, the Master of the Avos. And we stop there. We don't say, and He's also mine. We don't say Elokai, that Hashem is, is my Lord. He's my Master. And the question is, why not? Why stop short? If you're going to speak about Hashem in this grand, majestic sense of Yudke Vavke, He's beyond the time. I can't even describe what He is. And then you can say, but I can describe a relationship that I have with Him, of Elokim and Elokei Avoseinu. Why would we not say an Elokai? So herein lies two things that I want to talk about. Number one is the transition from saying Hashem, Yudke Vavke, to Elokeinu, Elokei Avoseinu. And number two, why would we not refer to a Kaddish Baruch Hu as a Lukai? So I think one of the things that a person should be feeling when he says Hashem's name is a certain awe, a sense of majesty, but an all-encompassing majesty of a Kaddish Baruch Hu when we use his name Yud Kei Vav Kei. The Ramam writes that there is Ahava Hashem and Yira Hashem, and both can be come to in the same way. That when a person wants to feel ahava for Hashem, so all he needs to do, says the Rambam, is to consider how beyond us HaKadosh Baruch Hu really is. And that HaKadosh Baruch Hu can do anything. And that he is responsible for everything. And everything we see, he's even beyond that. And the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes care of every little detail and every little creation in the world is a sense of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's care at the same time that gives us a sense that we sort of feel very small in all of that. That if you take a look outside, I'm in Washington Heights right now, and there are all these apartment buildings, and you consider every single window is a family. And every family has so many experiences and does so many things that we may never know anything about. Yet a Kaddish Baruch Hu knows everyone. A Kaddish Baruch Hu is taking care of everything. It's such a complicated, complex, massive world. And we're such a small cog in that wheel. It makes us take a step back and feel a type of yira. So on the one hand, when we say a Kaddish Baruch Hu's name, Yudke Vavke, we feel that a Kaddish Baruch Hu has an overwhelming chesed to the world. But when we say Elokeinu, Elokei Aviseinu, we take a step back when you say, but a Kaddish Baruch Hu also has a midas adin. There's a judgment. There is a certain restriction. And there's a certain sense that we're perhaps very small in all of that. So there's a balance between our feeling of closeness with a Kaddish Baruch Hu, as well as our feeling of distance from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. But why would we not say Elokai? So herein lies, I think, a little bit of Musr that we should consider, especially when we're beginning our Shemana and approaching a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That a person sometimes may approach a Kaddish Baruch Hu feeling, I have all kinds of needs, I have all kinds of things that I'm concerned about, and I uh, justifiably should be answered and responded to. On the other hand, when you feel very small and inadequate, so you know you feel like, what can I, what can I even ask from a Kaddish Baruch Hu? And in those situations, we need to feel that a Kaddish Baruch Hu wants us to ask from him, and that we should feel that we need to ask for all of Kalal Yisrael. But to say that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is a Lokai, means that he's my master and I am his servant. 
And unfortunately, it's very difficult to say such a thing. For a person to make a statement that I am a pure, trusted servant of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, means to say that everything I do in life is for his best interest and not for mine. So I think that's a little bit of Musa that we need to give ourselves every day when we approach a Kaddish Baruch Hu, is we recognize a tremendous chesed of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, as we say his name, Yud Kei But at the same time, he represented he's a Lord, that he's a master. He demands our service. And perhaps we uh, often fall short in that because the people that we look out for the most are ourselves. And maybe we need to little, work a little bit more on seeing a Kaddish Baruch Hu as our master. So we can't say hello, Kai. Kaddish Baruch Hu is not always my master, even though he should be. But to say that a Kaddish Baruch Hu in general is the master and the Lord of the world, a Lokeinu in the broad sense, and specifically in terms of the Avos, who we're about to justify what we're doing asking, because I'm a descendant, I come from those Avos. A Kaddish Baruch Hu was a master to them, and they were Ovde Hashem, servants of the Kaddish Baruch Hu, in a way that we all aspire to. Have a great day, Atzalacha.